let's go over some properties of non-local assignment in detail. So first of all, we need to write down the effect of non-local statements because there is a precise effect and you need to know it. So the effect is that future assignments to the name given in the non-local statement change the pre-existing binding of that name in the first non-local frame of the current environment in which that name is already bound. Okay, so this is important. We have the first non-local frame, and what does that refer to? Well, you have to have a multiple frame environment. The local frame is not a non-local frame, so that doesn't count. The global frame is not a non-local frame. That doesn't count either. It has to be something in between the local and the global frame, and this name already has to be bound there, and then we'll rebind it. Uh, this first non-local frame is what's called in the Python docs an enclosing scope. Okay. Non-local can actually have multiple names separated by commas. That's fine. And here are some details about how it works. These are directly taken from the Python 3 language reference. First, names listed in a non-local statement must refer to pre-existing bindings in an enclosing scope. So you can't introduce new things with non-local. All you can do is refer to something that's already been bound. If you try to refer to a name that isn't bound anywhere, you'll get an error right at the non-local statement. Second, names listed in a non-local statement must not collide with pre-existing bindings in the local scope. You can't have a non-local assignment to a name that's also bound locally. It just doesn't work that way because the local name shadows the non-local name. Now, how did I find this stuff out? Well, I just read the documentation for the Python language. So here are a couple of links that you can read more about. And this is an interesting feature of the language because it was added relatively late. And so you can see some of the discussion that went around, how it should be added, how it interacted with other features, and whether people really like to have it in the language or not. So I think it's universally accepted as a good idea that they now have non-local assignment in Python, but there was a time when it just didn't exist and there was a lot of debate around how it should be added. Okay, so x equals two seems like such a simple statement, but in fact, it does many different things depending on what's happened in the program thus far. So let's go through all the different things that x equals two can do depending on what's been happening in your program. First, if there's no non-local statement about x, and x is not bound locally, then what happens is that we create a new binding based on this assignment statement from the name x to the object 2 in the first frame of the current environment. If there's no non-local statement but x is already bound locally, then rebinding the name x to an object 2 in the first frame of the current environment. So rebinding is important because we lose the value that was bound to x before and now we have a new value for x. Here's a new kind of situation. We declare a non-local x. x is already bound in a non-local frame. Then, we rebind x to 2 in the first non-local frame of the current environment in which it is bound. So we don't make any changes to the local frame, but we do go find some other frame and change x there. What about non-local x and x is not bound in a non-local frame? That's an error. It will say syntax error, no binding for non-local x found. What if non-local x is stated x is bound in a non-local frame, but it's also bound locally? Well, that's another error. It will say name x is parameter and non-local. So if you see these two errors, you're in one of these two situations. Now, one thing you do need to worry about is a particular of Python, which sometimes catches people off guard. When Python executes a def statement to define a new function, it pre-computes which frame contains each name before executing the body of that function. It does this in part for efficiency. That way it knows exactly where to look when it's looking up the values for different names instead of having to search through the environment but it can lead to some funny behavior. Within a body of a function, all instances of the same name must refer 
to the same frame. So how can you get yourself into trouble? Well, let's say we wrote the same example we had before, but we forgot the non-local statement. We'd actually get an error right here. Because what Python would do is when it defined this function in the first place, it saw that balance was being bound locally. This is a local assignment statement because there's no non-local function in this version. Then, when the body of withdraw were executed, when it looked up balance, it would only look in the local frame because it had this clue that balance was being bound locally and therefore should appear in the local frame. So it would fail to find this balance. And you get this error, unbound local error, local variable balance referenced before assignment. Now you might think, why doesn't it just look up this balance instead? That's a reasonable thing to do, but down here, you've bound balance locally and you can't have balance referring to this balance and to a local balance all at the same time. Python just doesn't work that way. So when exactly does this error occur? Let's just take a quick look at the environment diagram to see. So it's okay to make withdraw. It's okay to create the withdraw function and return it. It's even okay to call it. The problem is that in this execution of the body of withdraw, Python's already decided that balance is local because we have local assignment. And therefore, it's when you get to this line that it says local variable balance referenced before assignment, which is confusing because really the problem is down here. We should have had non-local and we didn't. So you just be aware of this behavior. The way to fix this example is to put in the non-local statement for balance that I told you we need in order to make this example work correctly. So one last example that's worth looking at is that we actually don't need a non-local statement in order to have a mutable function. We could have just used the mutable value such as a list but we need some sort of mutation to be possible. So one way to do it is with a non-local statement. Here's another way to do it. We could make withdraw, and we'll call this make withdraw list just to say we're using a list. We'll, okay, so calling this makes a frame. And B will bind to a list which contains the balance. Now, since it's a list, the contents of this list can change over time. That's how lists work. So then, in the withdraw function, we can write almost the same withdraw function. There's no non-local statement because B is actually never rebound. Instead, its contents changed. So this is a different kind of assignment statement, an element assignment statement, where we have square brackets on the left side of equals. And what we're saying here is whatever is contained within the list B should be changed to whatever it was before minus the amount. And then we'll return that. So the key here is that since I don't have a non-local statement, I can never change what B is bound to in the body of withdraw, because that would be non-local assignment, and we don't have a non-local statement. But we can change the value that it's bound to if it's a mutable value, like a list. We can cruise through this example really quickly just to see it work. So what happens here is that balance is passed in, and that will always be 100. B here is bound to a list, the contents of which can change. When does that happen? Well, it happens when we call withdraw. So we have a frame here. The amount is not less than it's supposed to be. What we do here in this element assignment statement is we look up B in the current environment, and it's here. And we can't change what B is bound to, but we can change the value here. And so we change that value to contain 75 instead of 100. Notice we can't change balance. We can't make B refer to a different list or something like that, but we can change its contents enough to achieve what we want and return 75.